Hey guys, in part 2 of this Unreal Engine cross compilation tutorial, I'm going to go over building a dedicated server for Linux on Windows and deploying it to Amazon GameLift. If you haven't watched our previous tutorials on Amazon GameLift, I'd highly recommend watching them first. They're long but definitely worth it, link to that will be in the description. The project is also on GitHub, available for download, link to that also in the description. And before we get started, you may be wondering why are we doing all this extra work to get a server onto GameLift? Well, if we look at GameLift's pricing, you'll notice that a Linux instance is significantly cheaper than a Windows instance. So we Windows developers can use cross-compilation to save money while still taking advantage of Amazon's resources. Now let's open up File Explorer and make sure you're in the directory where your Unreal Engine built from source is located. Double click it to open it, then go to Engine then go to source, then go to programs, then go to Unreal Build Tool, then go to platform, then go to Linux, and open this file called linuxtoolchain.cs. Once the Linux toolchain is opened up, do a control find, look up get cl arguments underscore global, and it should take you to this method with the exact name. Just scroll down to where it says result plus equal dash wall dash w error. And we're just gonna have three simple lines after that line. We're gonna do result plus equal double quotes uh, space w or dash w. No non portable include path. And the next line is literally very similar except now the string is dash w no ignored attributes. And the last one is again same format except now the string is dash f d e c l spec and what we just did basically is we added command line arguments or compiler flags so that when we build the project for linux we suppress or fix certain errors caused by the unreal game with client sdk now if you're not using the unreal game with client sdk then you don't have to do this to your Linux toolchain. So just save that. And now we have to go back to the folder where our engine is located and open up the SLN file so that we can build the engine. Once again, building the engine is very simple. Just make sure for your solution configuration, select development editor, and then for your solution platform, select Win64, and then right click the UE4 file under the engine folder and select build. After that is finished compiling, let's quickly go to the Microsoft Store and look up Ubuntu. It should be the very first result, Ubuntu letter by letter by the Conical Group Limited. And you're going to want to install this right now. It's not showing because I already have it installed. And what this is, is Windows Subsystem for Linux, which includes Ubuntu binaries recompiled for Windows. All that is, is Ubuntu's user space and bash shell, which will allow us to run bash commands from a Windows command prompt. And we need this because the GameLift client and GameLift server SDKs depend on dynamic library files that can only be generated in a Linux environment. And once we get those SO files, we can package them with the rest of our server and deploy it to GameLift. Once that's finished installing, just click the launch button here. And what you see on my screen is not going to be the same as what you see on your screen. If you're running the Ubuntu app for the first time, for the first time you run it, it's going to install Ubuntu. And once it's done, it's going to ask you for a username and password. So just do that really quickly. And to make sure you've done the setup correctly, just go to command prompt, open it up and type in the four letters bash. And if you've done it correctly, it should look like that. If you experience any errors with this step, it may be because you don't have the Windows subsystem for Linux feature turned on. To check that, just look up features and then make sure to select turn Windows features on or off. And then just scroll down to where it says Windows subsystem for Linux and make sure it's checkmarked and then press OK. We can now proceed to install some packages for our new Linux environment. To do that, just type in sudo app install and then the name of the package. The first one out of five is going to be called CMake. And then once you press enter, um, it'll ask you for your password as well as it may prompt you for a yes or no answer. Just say yes to all those prompts as you install these packages. I'm not gonna press enter because I've already done this, but to run this command, just press enter. And then once this package is finished installing, do G++. And after G++, you're gonna do libssl-dev. And then after this, the next package is gonna be libcurl 4 dash open SSL dash dev. And then after this one, it's going to be zlib1g dash dev. 
And at any time after installing any of these packages, it may prompt you to run sudo app-get update. So I'm just gonna write that out. And you should honestly run this even if it doesn't prompt you after installing all the packages. It's just generally good practice. We also have to install a lot of libraries and packages from Git or GitHub. These packages include the AWS SDK for C++, the AWS C Common package, the AWS Checksums package, and the AWS C Event Stream package. Uh, long story short, the, these three packages are just dependencies for the big AWS SDK library. Um, what I would do in past tutorials was I would click on the clone or download button and then click download zip. And then once the zip was downloaded, I would right click the zip file and then click extract all. I've now learned that personally what works for me better is just going to a random folder like downloads or documents, right click anywhere and select git bash here. Now, if you don't have this option, that means you don't have git installed. So make sure you have git installed. So I do git bash here and then I would just do git clone and then I would copy the link from the clone or download uh, button and then I would paste that here and you have to do this for each of the four packages note that you only have to do this step if you're using the unreal game with client sdk from github made by yeti tech studios links to all of these will be in the description below once you've finished downloading extracting or git cloning the aws sdk package go to command prompt and also go to the folder where the package was installed and we're going to cd into it and then here we're going to go into bash and then we're going to run the cmake command with the d build underscore only flag and we're going to set that equal to core um, just to specify that we're only we only want specific packages and i'm going to do in double quotes dot dot slash dot or actually no just just dot dot slash because we're currently in the directory of the big SDK folder. So press enter and let that run. Once the CMake command is finished, just run sudo make install and press enter and let that run. Oh, and it may prompt you for your password. All right guys, now that the make command is finished, you're gonna notice that some tests have failed. That is absolutely okay. As long as the SO file is generated, there's nothing to worry about here, but we still have some packages to um, to build from this big AWS SDK. So the next CMake command is gonna be very similar syntax, CMake-build only, except instead of core this time, it's going to be cognito identity. And we're going to, of course, do the same thing in double quotes, just do dot slash, because this current directory is our big AWS SDK folder. So just press enter to run this. Once that's finished, exact same thing as before, just do a sudo make install, run it, and wait for it to finish. Once again, after the make uh, command is finished, you're going to see seven failed tests, but that's okay. As long as the SO file is generated, which we're going to check later, you'll be good. And let's do one last CMake command, um, except this time it'll be for the game lift package. So pay attention to the syntax once again, even though it's basically the same as before, just replace the dbuild only parameter with game lift and let that run. Once again, do a sudo make install for the game lift package. All right, once again, seven tests failed or how many ever tests failed, but it should have downloaded the SO file regardless. So let's go to where our AWS SDK folders located. Let's just check them one by one. Let's go to the Cognito Identity folder. You can see the SO file right here. Let's go back to the core folder. The SO file is right here. And let's go back to the game lift folder. And the SO file is right there. Moving on to the dependencies, make sure for each of these three packages that you have either downloaded and extracted them or you get cloned them. And we're gonna go to where this AWS C common package was get cloned to. And I'm just gonna go to command prompt so that I can CD into this. So I'm gonna paste the path of where this package is located. Then I'm gonna do bash. And then I'm gonna type in the CMake command. It's gonna be a little different this time. Um, DC make underscore install underscore prefix. I'm gonna set this equal to tilde slash AWS underscore DEPS. 
And then another flag, D build underscore shared underscore libs equal on. And then for the file path, I'm gonna pass in dot slash and then just let that run. Once that's done, as usual, just do sudo make install. Moving on to the checksums package. Again, just locate where you downloaded it and we're gonna CD into here. So let's go to command prompt once again. CD and bash and then cmake dbuild, oh, sorry, dc make underscore install underscore prefix equal tilde slash aws underscore dps and then dbuild shared libs equal on and then dot slash. And of course, just do another sudo make install. All right, and for the last dependency, AWSC event stream, once again, go to wherever that folder is located, and then we're gonna CD into it, as usual. And then just uh, do bash, and then we're gonna run cmake, dc make, install, prefix, set it equal to tilde slash AWS underscore depths, and then we're gonna do dbuild, shared, libs equal on s and um, that slash and sudo make install all right so we still need one more package so i'm going to go back in the command prompt once again and i'm going to cd into downloads and then i'm going to go to bash and i'm going to make a new directory called open ssl this is the name of the package we need to install and I'm just gonna do a CD into this open SSL folder I just made, and I'm gonna do a sudo wget https colon slash slash www.openssl.org slash source slash open SSL dash 1.1.ok.tar.gz. I'm gonna add the no check certificate flag. From that, we should have gotten a tar file and we need to uncompress it. So we're gonna do sudo um, tar-zxf open ssl 1.1.ok.tar.gz. And we're also gonna cd into this newly made folder. So just let that run. Now just call sudo dot slash config. This will run the config program. And right after that, we can do a sudo make install. Once that's done, I'm gonna go to the uh, file explorer, specifically my documents folder. I'm just gonna make a new folder. Uh, you can call it whatever. I'm just gonna call it Linux files. It's really just to organize all those SO files that we just generated. So I'm going to go to the downloads folder since that's most of where I did this stuff. So let's go to AWSC common. And you see this lib aws c commonso file. I'm going to take not only that one, but the zero unstable and zero file below it. I'm going to copy, I'm just going to paste it here. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to the C event stream folder. I'm going to go into the lib folder though this time. And I'm going to copy these files, put them in here as well. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to the checksums folder. And I'm going to copy just this one lib aws checksums so file. There's only one this time. And now I'm gonna to go to the big SDK folder. I'm just gonna do it one at a time. I'm gonna to go to the Cognito Identity folder first. Copy this lib-aws.so uh, file, just paste it here. I'm gonna go back, do the same thing for core. Just take the lib-aws file, copy it in here. And then let's go down to the uh, gamelet folder and just copy the SO file here as well. I almost forgot the open SSL files that we generate, so just go to that folder. And you're gonna specifically want to look for two files here. It should be this lib ssl.so.1.1. So I'm gonna copy and paste that, as well as the lib crypto.so.1.1 file. So copy that as well. And that should be it for the client SDK. Let's move on to the server SDK dependency now. Go to the Amazon GameLift Getting Started page and under where it says Amazon GameLift Server SDK, click the Download Now button. You should get a zip file. Go to where that zip file is located and right click it and click Extract All 
and press extract. Once you're done extracting, you should see this window pop up. Just double click this GameLift folder and then go to the GameLift SDK release folder. And then take this GameLift CPP server SDK folder and then just drag it to the downloads folder so that we can avoid any issues related to super long file paths. Go back to the downloads folder and now open up the GameLift CPP server SDK folder. Copy this file path and we're going to go into the command prompt. And you're going to want to CD into that uh, file path. And we're going to go into bash. And we're going to make a new directory called out. We're going to CD into it. And we're going to call the CMake command with the D build for Unreal flag in all caps. And we're going to set that to one. And for the file path, just do dot dot. Press enter. Let that run. Once that command is finished running, you can run sudo make now. And let that run. Once the make command is finished, you may or may not receive this error. If you did not receive the error and the make uh, finished successfully, then you can skip a little ahead in this video. But at the time of this recording, when I ran the make file, I got this error as you can see here. And we can fix this pretty easily. So just follow the file path noted here. So we're, gonna, we're in our out folder right now. So let's just go and follow the path. So we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to out and then we're gonna go to third party then SIO client lib websocket app uh, websocket pp transport osseo security and then tls.hpp I'm just gonna edit this with a standard notepad editor and their suggestion is um, go to line uh, 310 I believe 310 and instead of SSL R short read we're just gonna replace that with SSL F underscore SSL short read. Or my bad. We're replacing SSL R short read with SSL F SSL read. So just save that and simply just run the sudo make command once again. And this time it should succeed. Once the make file is finished running, go to your uh, game with server SDK folder that we were just in, and then the out folder, and then the prefix folder, and then the lib folder, and you'll now notice this lib aws-cpp-sdk-gamelift-server.so file. And we're going to transfer that to our newly made Linux files folder. We're just gonna copy this file from here and place it in here. And that was pretty much the last of all the SO files that we need to package with our project before deploying to GameLift. All right, so now go to the location of your Unreal Engine project in File Explorer. For me, my project is called GameLift Tutorial. So I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna go into the plugins folder and I'm gonna start with the GameLift Server SDK folder. And then I'm gonna go to third party, GameLift Server SDK. And here I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call it Linux. I'm gonna go in the Linux folder and I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call it x86 underscore 64 dash unknown dash Linux dash GNU. And I'm gonna leave it as that. Go in here and I'm gonna copy and paste this lib AWS game lift server SO file in here. So that covers that. Now let's go back to the plugins. Let's go into the game with client SDK folder. Let's go to third party and let's go in the game with client SDK. And we're actually gonna go into Win64 Win first. And we're gonna actually copy these DLL and lib files from the Win64 folder. We're gonna go back one level up to game with client SDK. We're gonna make a new folder and we're gonna call this Linux. And then go in here and copy and paste those DLL and lib files from the Win64 folder. And we're also, in the meantime, we're gonna take these three SO files. So we're gonna take the libaws cognito identity SO file, the libaws core file, and the libaws game lift uh, file. All of these were from the, um, these were all from the AWS C SDK for C++. So I'm gonna copy and paste like usual. And that covers that. Let's go back to our main project folder and double click our U project folder so that we can open our project in Unreal Engine. Once your project is loaded in the editor, go to File and click on Open Visual Studio. 
After Visual Studio is loaded up for the solution configuration, make sure you have selected development server, make sure for the platform you have Linux selected, and then right click your game under the games folder and select build. Once the server is finished compiling, let's go back to the Unreal Engine editor. Let's go to file, package project, choose Linux since we're building a Linux server, and then choose select folder. I just want to note that we did the packaging and map settings in a prior video. So again, I highly suggest watching those other videos. Now that our build is finished, let's go back to where our project is located and you should see a new folder called Linux No Editor. Now before I go into it, I wanna go into this plugins folder and I wanna just copy the game with server SDK folder. So go back and then go to the Linux No Editor folder, go to game with tutorial, go to plugins, and the reason why I copy that folder is because it's just missing. So let's just paste that folder. Now go back to the main project folder and go to binaries, go to Linux. And these four server files, we're just going to copy all of them. And we're going to go back to the main project folder. We're going to go back to the Linux no editor folder. We're going to go to the game with tutorial folder, then binaries, then Linux. And we're just gonna cop or we're just gonna paste all those server files. Along with these server files, we also need to get all of those uh, SO files we generated from a while ago. Copy all of them, and you're gonna paste them in the same folder that your uh, server executable is located. So we're just gonna paste all of those. We're also going to need to create and install shell script for our dedicated server before deploying it to Amazon Gameless. So let's go to command prompt here. Let's cd into our project's Linux no editor folder. Let's go into bash and let's do vi install.sh. Now this will not only create the install shell script, but it will allow us to edit it. So to edit it, press I and then start typing out hashtag exclamation point bin or slash bin slash sh. And then on the next line, we're gonna do sudo chmod plus x and then in double quotes dot slash name of your project. So for me, game with tutorial slash binaries slash Linux slash name of your project server and then double quotes. So what this chmod command does, it will give your server binary files sufficient privileges to be run on Amazon game Lift. Now press escape and then do colon slash X to save your changes. And that should be it for the install shell script. I just want to note that this install shell script can be rewritten to actually uh, save us a lot of time so that instead of a lot of those SO files that we installed on the Windows Ubuntu, you could actually rewrite the shell script to install a lot of those SO files on the Amazon Linux server when you deploy your Unreal project to Amazon Game Lift. The issue is that I'm not very well versed in just Linux in general. So if someone who is more well versed in Linux could just comment down below or just come up with a shell script that installs a lot of these SO files, then that would be greatly appreciated. Our project should now be ready for deployment to Amazon Game Lift. So once again, command line, uh, go to bash as usual. And first, I didn't cover this in the last tutorial, so I'm just gonna do it just in case. And you need to do it again anyway. We have to do sudo app install AWS CLI, just press enter, password. Once you've finished installing AWS CLI, just do AWS configure so that you can configure AWS command line. And it's gonna ask you for four things, an access key, a secret access key, a location code, as well as a default output format. I'm not gonna go through this because I've covered it in um, previous videos. What I didn't mention in previous videos is Make sure that whatever user you configure your AWS CLI, make sure that that user has sufficient game lift privileges. So in this case, the permission policy for this user that I have configured has all the game lift permissions. It can do all the game lift actions. With that being said, you should be ready now to upload your server build to game lift. So type out AWS game lift, upload dash build, dash dash name, uh, just name it whatever, I'm just gonna call mine tutorial, uh, dash dash build, dash version, and then give it a version number, I'm just gonna give it three, a random number, dash dash build, dash root, and this should be the path of your Linux no editor folder. 
So I'm just going to put in quotes. Now it's a little different since you're in Ubuntu. It's going to be uh, all forward slashes, by the way. So forward slash MNT slash C slash users slash uh, the user, which is me slash documents slash Unreal. Again, this is really going to depend on where your Linux no editor folder in your Unreal Engine project is located. So I'm just going to type that out. And then I'm going to add another fat flag uh, dash dash operating dash system in all caps Amazon underscore Linux uh, dash dash region. And you got to put in your region code. For me, it's um, US East dash two. And that should be it. Press enter and let that run. Go to the AWS Game Loop Management Console. On the top right, make sure the region corresponds with your region. And then uh, you should see your build that you just created on the top here. Just to make sure, check the version number as well as the name. Select it and then select Create Fleet from Build. For the name, I'm just going to do Test Fleet. For the fleet type, I'm going to keep it as On Demand despite the fact that spot fleets are significantly cheaper than On Demand fleets. The reason is because spot fleets, the game sessions made with spot fleets are more prone to terminating unexpectedly. That is because uh, spot fleets are very efficient at recycling resources. If it sees something that's not being used or not very active, it's just going to terminate it. And that's why later in the tutorial series, I'm going to go in depth into gameless matchmaking and queuing system so that you can use spot fleets, take advantage of the very cheap pricing while minimize your chances of the sessions terminating unexpectedly. Now, I'm going to just choose on demand for now. And then for the instance type, I'm going to choose the free tier for the uh, launch path. I'm going to just type it out. It should be the name of your project forward slash binaries forward slash Linux slash name of your project server. Click the green check mark. And then for the port range, just add a port settings. Uh, port range should be 777. Protocol should be UDP, IP address range should be 0.0.0.0/0. Click the green check mark. Protection policy, like we were saying earlier, if you want your game sessions to stay active as long as possible, then you should choose full protection. But since this is a tutorial series, I'm just going to choose no protection for now and then initialize the fleet. Once your fleet is finished building, let's go to the command prompt. And we don't have to go in the bash for this, but if you want to, you can. We're going to type in AWS game lift create dash game dash session space double dash fleet dash ID. And then we have to copy this fleet ID and paste it into here. Space uh, maximum player session count and I'm just going to set this to an arbitrary number like 10. So let that run. So you should have successfully created a game session and it'll give you an ID here. So we're just going to copy that. Now go to the Unreal Engine editor, go to blueprints, go to open level blueprints. You should be on level entry by the way when you do that. And once uh, the level blueprint has opened up, make sure you're by the create player session node and for the game session ID this is where you should paste that code now for the create game lift object node this access key and secret access key I have went over it before you should have made if you did watch the previous tutorial videos you should have made a user with only specific privileges in game lift and once you have made that then it should have given you an access key and secret key that you should have stored somewhere this is where you would put it so just do that once you do, then just save and compile. Go back to the main editor window. Just click on save current, go to file, go to package project. This time we're going to choose Windows and I'm going to choose Windows 64 bit. And this is going to be for building the client. Now I haven't confirmed yet if this works for a Linux client. If someone could do that and get back to me in the comments below, I will respond right away. If there's an issue, I will attempt to fix it right away. So please do that if someone can. Once the game is finished packaging, let's go to File Explorer and let's go to our project's location. 
and we're going to go specifically to the Windows No Editor folder and we're going to launch the application for our game. And I'm actually going to want to do this twice because I want to show you guys that there are going to be two players in the same game lift session. So if I jump in front of this guy and alt tab, you're going to notice that the players moving can be seen on both clients. And I'm just going to switch to the other guy and just show the same thing goes both ways. So as you can see, you can still see the player movement on both sides. And that is pretty much it guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, comment, and subscribe. We also have a Discord you guys should definitely join. It's a great community right now. Join us on Patreon if you want to support us. And also, the source code for this project will be in the description below. Again, have a nice day.